Welcome to Louisville, guys. Okay. All right. If you have questions, uh, go ahead and uh, raise your hand, let us know, and then tell us who you are and where you're from. We'll get a microphone to you. And we'll get started with the Wildcats. Uh, Joe Giuliano, Philadelphia Inquirer for all the players. Um, Miami uh, guards are experienced, and they seem to uh, drive the ball a lot. They've shot a lot of free throws. Uh, what, what do you guys see in the Miami guards, and what about the plans to uh, you know defend them on Start Thursday? With, sorry. Start with Ryan, then Josh, then Daniel. Um, yeah, they have great drivers. Uh, they have great scores on the perimeter. I think one of the things that we're going to have to do to stop them is um, not show them any space, show them uh, our bodies and our triangles so that they uh, don't see the space to be able to drive into the paint. But uh, we know they're great shooters too, so it's going to be a tough matchup for us. Yeah, you know, just continuing with what Brian said, they're experienced, they're you know, physical, they're strong. We just can't let them see space. We got to load to them. Uh, we can't just swipe at them. And, you know, hopefully, you know, that'll slow them down. We got to have them see our bodies, not seeing driving spaces, um, you know, able to get in the lane. So that's really the main thing, just being loading to them. Uh, I think also just adding to what they said, just guarding them as a team. You know, not one guy is going to stop uh, Rodriguez or McClellan. You know, it's going to be the whole team playing them. And I think uh, just us locking into our scouting report the way we did the last game, focusing on uh, how it was two main scorers in a game like this, you know, it's very similar. Thanks, guys. Kyle? Kyle Tucker, Courier Journal. Ryan, I know you've talked about this, but just how similar are you to your head coach and to the other guys? How similar is he uh, to your head coach? Um, I think we're, we're, we're definitely similar in that we have the same mindset of what uh, Villanova basketball is, just playing hard out on the floor, giving it your all, and uh, just, just kind of knowing, knowing everything out on the floor. I think... Uh, he thinks of me as the coach on the floor, and I think I'm an extension of Coach Wright. So I think um, I'm kind of the bridge between coach and player on the floor, and I can, if coach is getting on some of the guys, I know how to, how to just like uh, tell them in a, in a different tone and and just kind of keep their head on straight to uh, not get, not get frustrated and to know that we're all in this together. Yeah, uh, you you want to say, uh, uh, I'll just continue with what he said, just being a leader on the you know a coach on the court. Uh, you know, obviously. A lot of times, Coach Wright has tough love, uh, you know, with all of us. Um, he's able to kind of always, you know, be there, you know, be behind us, um, you know, talk to us, settle us down, um, and just, you know, say what Coach wants in a little bit of a friendlier, or, you know, nicer way. Uh, so he's able to really, you know, be a coach on the court and just keep us all together. Um, honestly, I don't think I don't think they're that much alike. I just think Arch is such a Villanova basketball player. Coach Wright has so much trust in him that he's just you know he's out there doing exactly what Coach expects. You know, the only thing for me personally that's um that has them being alike is they're from Bucks County. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> Thanks, Josh. Then Daniel. Uh, let's go left side here. Hi, guys. Janine Edwards, ESPN. Um, Coach had said after the game the other night that he had had a talk with you before um, saying, hey, we've been here before, and if we didn't play great, if we didn't win, it didn't kill us. So he's talked to you guys about having that approach. That's kind of a different approach, actually, is you know not being afraid to fail because it's not going to kill us. How did that theme and that approach from your coach impact you guys? What did you take away from that type of philosophy and any one of you or all of you can answer that let's start here with Ryan I think um, we've all heard it throughout our four years so it hasn't it wasn't just this this past game versus Iowa getting past his second game it's that's just the way coach has always always been uh, from my freshman year he's always coached that way and have no fear in losing as long as we go try uh, try to play Villanova basketball for 40 minutes um, then whatever the end result is, we'll be satisfied with it. But if we do that and we play Villanova basketball for 40 minutes, we know uh, we're going to be successful, and we know that uh, there's going to be a good result in the end. Josh, then Daniel, please. Yeah. Um, no. The one thing is Coach Wright. You know, he he's always he's always real with us. Um, sometimes he looks at um, you know, the worst case scenario, and you know the worst case scenario. You know, if we lose, you know, it's not going to kill us. <laughs> we're still going to be. You know, playing, you know, able to play basketball. Um, you know, we're going to be here, so we can. We looked at the worst case scenario, and we could handle the worst case scenario. And I think that was the biggest part 
but just, you know, this is the worst case scenario. We can handle this. So, you know, let's move on and let's just play basketball. Let's not play, you know, to, you know, to, you know, get out the second round or anything like that. Like, like just go out there and play Villanova basketball. And that's kind of the approach he took. Yeah, and just. Daniel. I mean, I mean, it just gives us a freer mind. Um, I mean, just what what Josh said about the worst case scenario. I mean, the worst case scenario for us in the Big East tournament is we lost, we lose in the first round as the one seed. We already did that before. Um, the worst case scenario in the NCAA tournament is lose in the first round. We already did that before. Um, if we didn't get to the Sweet 16, we already did that before. So now it's just a different challenge, and I think just you know getting that out of our mind, we can just focus on playing Villanova basketball and keeping it 94 by 50 feet. Right side now. Ryan, what are some, some of the things about yourself that you can see in your coach? And were those some of the things that sort of drew you to, to him? Um, I think we have a lot of connections. Just uh, my mom, both my parents went to Villanova. His wife went to Villanova. And my mom and her lived on the same hall. Um, I think, like uh, Daniel said, we're from this, uh, basically the same town. We went to rival high schools. I played against his uh, his younger brother, and um, he was the coach at the rival high school we played against. But <coughs> excuse me, um, I don't. I mean, I don't think I dress as well as him or anything. I mean, I don't know. I just uh, I think I'm just on the court, and just I think that's the way that he he wants a Villanova basketball player to be, and he thinks that that's the way uh, that he wanted to be as a player. And he's if he could still play, I think he would would pick me as the player to play him. <laughs> okay, stay on the right here. Mark Herman from Newsday in New York. Everyone wants to progress in the postseason. I ask each player, what are you guys doing better now than you were at the beginning of the Big East tournament? Start with Daniel, then go to Josh and Ryan. I think um, our team defense has gotten a lot better, and um, that just goes to um, our younger guys. Um, them just stepping up, understanding our scouting report more, and just locking in more. And then, you know, guys like myself, Josh, Ryan, we're experienced and we've done this before. We just got to continue staying on ourselves to, you know, demand greatness of ourselves. And if we're doing it, the younger guys don't have an excuse not to do it because, you know, if, when they mess up, we could get on them, we could teach them, and they could respond. And then, you know, when they're on the bench watching the start the game off, they see these are how the starters are coming out. You know, committed to Villanova basketball, you know, defending and rebounding and sticking to the scouting report. So as soon as they get in the game, there's no excuse for them. Yeah, um, really just what Daniel said. Um, you know, it, what, Coach Wright really didn't talk too much to us about on the offensive side. It was about defense, about you know, recommitting ourselves to our defensive, you know, philosophy. Um, I think that second half of the Seton Hall game, um, you know, defensively, uh -huh, is where we kind of, Picked it up a little bit. Uh, Phil Booth, Mikel Bridges came in, played outstanding minutes um, on the defensive end. Um, and that was the reason why we were able to kind of get back into that game because we committed ourselves to defense. Um, and then this moving, you know, obviously you had that heartbreak, uh, you know, at the end of that game. But just moving forward, we focused on defense, defending, you know, rebounding, doing, playing hard. Uh, we know, you know, off you know we're skilled offensively, uh, but uh, there's going to be days where our shots are falling and we shoot uh, what, Iowa, we shot like 70-something or 60-something percent in the second half. There's going to be games like that. But, you know, we're focusing on the games where we don't shoot the ball well, where, you know, we can't buy a basket, but we're defending, we're rebounding, we're, we're in, our game, in the game because of defense. And I think that's something that we're really picking up, you know, since the Big East tournament. Yes, sir. Um, I think we're starting the games off better. I think in the Big East tournament, we, uh, we struggled to start the games off strong, both offensively and defensively. We saw that we got down early against Seton Hall. But I think in the Asheville and the Iowa game, we all came out knowing the scouting report and executing offensively. So I think um, starting the games off uh, better is probably the one thing I would say that we've been getting better at, better at throughout these uh, last couple games. All right, guys, we're going to let you guys go. Cool. Appreciate your time today, and good luck. Thank you. Thank you.
Hmm? Ladies and gentlemen, Coach Wright is on his way to the uh, interview room. When he gets here, we'll have him throw out an opening statement, then we'll take questions. And we'll get a microphone to you. Make sure you raise your hand, get that mic to you, and then uh, let us know who you are and what outlet you're with. Hey, Coach, how are you? Yes, sir. Thank you, Coach. Have a seat. All right, whenever you're ready, we'll... Uh, Welcome to Louisville. Thank you. Um, great to be here. Great to be in the Sweet 16. Nice to be in Louisville, not playing the Cardinals. Last time we were here, Yum Center was, uh, we had to go against the Cardinals. That wasn't, that wasn't a pretty thing. But uh, everybody here has been just uh, so friendly. And uh, Coach Patino let us use the, the practice facility over there. And uh, we just had a good practice. And we're, uh, we're ready to go. We'll get our, our open practice out here and um, taking on a great team. And this time of year, that's what you get, a very experienced, well-coached, disciplined, physically tough team. So we're, we're, we're fired up about it. Good deal. All right, let's start on the right side and the back, and then we'll work our way forward and over. Jim Womble, ESPN Louisville. Coach, talk about what you think of Louisville as a host city and your overall thoughts on the city, please. Well, you know, we, we've, we used to come here at the Big East, always loved it. Um, I, I made a joke. You, you, can, you can tell when you come, as you get into the airport, everybody you meet, um, college basketball is real important to them. You know, they, they know who you are. They know, they know the team. Um, and it, same thing when you get to the hotel. You, you just can sense in this city um, – that everybody follows college basketball. Everybody loves college basketball. Uh, it's a perfect site for the NCAA tournament. Thanks, Coach. Now we'll stay on the right here and just go in, in the row here. One, two, three. Kyle Tucker, Courier Journal. Jay, uh, Ryan, I know you've talked about this some, but Ryan said that you know if you could still play, he thinks he would be the guy you would reincarnate yourself as, I guess, and that you, you view him as an extension of yourself and all those things. So it, it, what about him, I guess? What do you? What parts of yourself do you see in him, and, and maybe does, of him does he see in you? I, I did play like him, but not as well. I, I was not as good a player. But the, um, his competitiveness on every possession and in, in everything he does, you know, from getting over a screen to uh, making the right play, diving on a loose ball, um, taking every defensive challenge personally, um, taking responsibility for his teammates, t taking responsibility for the entire program. Um, I, I, I love everything about him. I, and I didn't, I didn't put that into him. He, he came in that way. And that's what really um, made him effective immediately as a freshman, and it's why we made him captain as a freshman. Mark Herman from Newsday. Uh, how how long have you known Coach Larinaga, and uh, you know what's what's that relationship like, and what is that three point drill that he uh, yeah. shared? He, uh, I met him from my Hofstra days when I was at Hofstra, and uh, um, Tom Pacora, my assistant, you know, was a New York guy, and I was learning the New York scene, the basketball scene. I, I was a Philly guy coming in there, and. Uh, Jim is very well respected in New York City basketball, you know, having been a Bronx guy and, and playing at Malloy for the legendary Coach Curran. So every time we re would recruit somebody, he was at Bowling Green, Hofstra Bowling Green on the same level. We think we'd be in with somebody and he'd come in there and he had much stronger connections, but I'd always run into him. So we developed a relationship and then as he went to George Mason, we went to Villanova, we went on uh, um, Nike trips together. Our wives became friendly, played golf together. We played golf together. And he's just a real friendly guy. So from our New York connection, we stayed in touch. And then we I should, we shared ideas. I, I don't know if I gave him anything. I don't think I did. But he, had, um, he, he, puts, uh, he, he gives his players red, yellow, and green in terms of how they are allowed to 
shoot, and it's a system. We don't use the colors, but I use the philosophy. And he's got, I stole a number of, there's a number of drills he gave me um, where you put um, time on the clock, how many three-pointers you can make on a time in that time period, and then he, he keeps a record of all his players. So he has who has made the most, and Larkin has the most. No one on our team has broken Larkin's record, and we've shared that with our guys. We've stolen a lot of drills. I don't think I told our guys I got a lot of them from Miami, except the one, the timed three-pointing drill, three-point shooting drill I did because I told the guys what Larkin made, and guys have tried to beat that. One more on the right, and then two here on the left. Uh, Joe Giuliano, Philadelphia Inquirer. Jay, uh, c continuing on that tone, uh, you mentioned in the past that you hate coaching against your former assistants and your friends. Um, I got both. What, you got, what's uh, what's it going to be like tomorrow, and uh, and uh, you know how much do you have for, uh, respect you have for the program that he's built at Miami? Yeah, it, it, actually, when you get to the Sweet 16, Final Eight, Final Four, that that kind of goes away. I, I don't know why, you know, because um, you, you you're so focused on what you do. You, it, you you're so happy to be there um, and usually when you get to this point it's, it's guys you know you know and I, I've learned that over the years it's guys you either know or guys you've really looked up to you know and Jim is both um, I, I really have respect for the fact that when he was at Bowling Green that was an outstanding program I knew how good that program was because we were always recruiting against them I knew who he was getting I knew their success I knew the respect that New York City people had for them then he went to George Mason, did it again, and we played them in the NCAA tournament. They beat us, and uh, and and so you know we we were becoming closer friends. And then he goes to Miami, and he does it again, and does it the same way. He builds a team. He hired one of our former assistants, um, and he 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 does it with a team, family, mentality, and uh, and and they uh, they take great pride in playing the right way, and and. Um, and playing for the name on the front of their jersey. He's done it that way everywhere he's been, and I really respect that. Okay. Therese? Therese Walker, Associated Press. With that familiarity with him, he, he kind of mentioned that he looks and sees maybe mirror images, you know, between yeah. Miami and Villanova. Uh, does that make it easier preparing tomorrow night, or, you know, with, because of the, the, the rosters, is that the wild card in this situation? You know, I, that's going to be – it makes it a little easier to prepare in terms of the work you have to do because you, we do – we have a lot of similar philosophies. So when you're practicing, uh, the, the second team can run the offense easily. They know what they're doing. Where it becomes different is you, we can't simulate the, the size and athleticism. And you definitely can't do it with your second team. So it, it, it's going to be interesting when you get to the game, uh, are, are we prepared for the plays? And, and does the size and athleticism kind of smack us in the face when you when you feel it and see it live. You know, that, that's, that's what we can't tell until we play. Janine? Coach, hi, Janine Edwards, ESPN. Um, can you give us two or three things about Miami that you think will be most challenging? And based on what you saw from their game against Wichita State the other night, how they gave up a 21-point lead, came back, what do you think they got out of that that will make them extra difficult for you guys? Let me start with that Wichita State game because it's something we share with our team and, and, um, and that we were very impressed with. Um, they, they started that game very focused and, and very prepared for an outstanding Wichita State team, took the lead. Uh, Wichita State, great team, came back, took the lead. When they took the lead, you could see in their eyes no panic, uh, no concern, and you saw them step it up another level against a team that was on a run. If you do that anytime, you're a good team. But when you do that in the NCAA tournament, when you fight against momentum in the NCAA tournament with no panic, momentum in the NCAA tournament is far greater than any other time during the year. The crowd got into it. Wichita State got into it. Miami never flinched, took back control of the game, and then methodically put them away. We, we told our guys, you you, you got to be wily veterans to be able to do that. And... To give you three things that they do, I, number one, their guard play. Um, McClellan and Rodriguez are outstanding. You've got two go one guard that can really score and create for the other, and, and McClellan, one that is just an incredible scorer. 
when you, when you add Newton and Reed, you could actually see um, that when those two leave, Newton and Reed are going to be the same combo because Newton's creative and he can score like Rodriguez. Reed is incredibly athletic, can shoot it. But this year you got four of them together. It's not just the two. It's the four of them that are outstanding. And then you take their forwards who play the role of screening for them, rebounding extremely well. But also if you spend too much attention on those guards, those guys can score. It's a really unique team. That's what makes them a great team. All right, last question here. C.L. Brown with ESPN.com. I have a two-part question about Chris Jenkins. Uh, one, he just described himself coming out of high school as, as a fat kid uh, and, and that you had a vision for him that you kind of put in front of him. I was wondering if you could elaborate on what that vision was. And the second part is, uh, how do you feel like he makes kind of everything work in terms of being a, a – a four guy who can play somebody bigger defensively and take advantage offensively. Well, I'm glad he said that, that he was a fat kid. I would never say that about anybody. But he was, um, he was, he had a lot more mass than he should have had on that bone structure. And when we watched him in high school, we saw an outstanding basketball player, an outstanding leader, and, and an outstanding scorer that uh, took his team to a championship and was the player of the year in Washington, D.C. And we're looking at him and we're saying, the only thing negative about this kid is that he's overweight. That's it. So we, we, we were recruiting um, his teammate, Nate Britt, and his brother. So we brought them both up together, but we were recruiting Nate. And we said to Chris, we would love to have you if you would really want to come in here and get into shape and, and cut your body fat because we think if you did that, you could be an incredible basketball player. But if you don't, you can't really play at this level. And we didn't really, make, we weren't real aggressive about that. We just said that was reality. And he became very interested in us. And once we saw that he wanted that, we said, we got something special here. And if you could imagine coming into college and as a freshman in college having to cut out sweets, cut out juice, not eat candy. I mean, I followed him into it. We ate dinner one time. We went out to dinner as a team, and we came out of the restaurant, and I saw him sneak into a drugstore, and I followed him in behind him and got behind us and to see what he would buy. We ate a nice, healthy dinner, and then he went in and bought candy bars and juice, and then I came in behind him in the line, and he turned around and just said, oh, no, and I, I made him give it back. But, I mean, to go through that in college is not easy. And... And he, we have so much respect for him for doing that. And what he gives us is a guy that can play any position on the floor, and now he, he's learning how to play as a conditioned athlete. There's one thing to get conditioned, but if you played your whole way as an unconditioned athlete, th that's how you play. Now he's learning how to play like a conditioned athlete, and he can play anywhere on the floor. So he, he's a mismatch nightmare for the opponent, but he's also a, a valuable um, resourceful player for us that can play any position. Coach, we're going to have to wrap it up. Appreciate your time. See you, Good luck. Thank you, guys.